Hello there, and today I'm going to be looking at the figure that is, uh, well, on my profile picture. The Star Wars Black Series Scarif Squad Leader from Rogue One. Overall, this figure is fantastic. It's one of my favourite figures. It was the first Trooper figure I got, and it was the first Black Series figure that I really said, damn, I love this thing too. It is brilliant for 20 quid. You can get it for around 16 and 19 quid now, and it's definitely worth picking up if you see it. Either online or in the wild, it is a fantastic piece. So, uh, taking a look, zoomed in, we have that lovely out of focus helmet. And I really like how the uh, Scarif Trooper or the Trooper designs in Rogue One looked anyway. Come on, get in focus. I'm having so much trouble with focus today, I don't know what's up. My hands in focus now. But not the figure. But it looks good. He's got a uh, symbol here. Ooh. He's got the uh, mouthpiece here. Visor here. I always prefer troopers with visors and eye holes. I think it'll just be easy to see out of. I always think, like, I remember Mark Hamill saying uh, during filming of A New Hope that the helmets are impossible to see. See out of. See, I prefer the visor look anyway. It's got this nice blue stripe across it. This is the shoulder pad featured on the Mandalorian, which is another great figure. Definitely pick it up. Uh, we've got some nice yellow detail here. More painting here. Plastic skirting, which is different to the... Where is it? Where is it? The Clone Commander's skirting, which are soft goods. And I like... I like the soft goods are uh, much easier to move, but at the same time, this... Like, has a nice texture to it, it just looks really good. Back, we've got some venting, some nice dirtied up legs, which I always think, like, and also on the chest, we've got some dirt, which I always like a trooper with a bit of, uh, bit of dirt on them. Like, they've seen some action recently, they've haven't had a chance to clean off their armor, they've been in a firefight. I just love that aesthetic. So, accessories isn't the best for this figure, actually. He just comes with a uh, blaster. Uh, if it would focus in there. There we go, we have some nice silver detail. We have... Here we have some nice red detail here. Scope. Magazine here. The other side we have a sort of laser sight. I've played too much Call of Duty. Nice stock, which is a bit... Is a bit warped. Which is fairly straight, but this stock keeps on there. And then a nice handle here. That fits really well into the hand. It just pops in. He's got a uh, trigger finger hand on his right, and he can he can move this hand round and pop it in there. So coming to the articulation of the figure, we have a ball joint and hinge at the head, so we can go. Up, down, it's got a bit of tilt, full rotation, and he's got a bit of chicken movement, ball joint of the body, so we've got left and right. Front, he kind of goes over a bit of the armour and really good front, that's neutral. And back, very nice arc into the back, so you've got a lot of posability there in the chest. The arms we've got all the way out of the shoulder pad does do a good job of slotting under the armour. We have a full rotation. 90 degree bend. I would have liked a bit more. I would have liked if they cut out a bit up here on the red section to kind of allow for a bit more than 90. But we've got a uh, rotation of the arm. Up and down and a swivel of a trigger finger. And a in and out and swivel. An on trigger finger. Voice we can go all the way out, all the way back, which is blocked by the uh, butt sculpt and the uh, plastic flaps here. Out, not too well, I think. Yeah, this belt piece is uh, getting in the way. We have a rotation here, which I forgot to mention in the sculpt, but I really like how this uh, is like a cloth look, and it really does a good job of breaking up the armour. 
Uh, sorry, I should have mentioned that earlier. And he's got a double bend at the knee. He goes fairly far back, but you will have an issue of riding into the uh, uh, plastic laps. Forward, back, forward, back. And rotation. Good enough rotation and out, so you can get a pretty wide stance. Everything on the ground is kind of in a weird rock star pose there, but yeah, the articulation is fantastic. I would have liked a bit more, but it is an older figure, so I can kind of excuse it for not having as much. So, how does this guy scale? Well, here he is with uh, the Iron Man from Avengers Endgame, the Marvel Legends Iron Man. Here he is with a Marvel Legends Deadpool. Here he is with Bespin Han Solo. And here he is with Clone Commander Fox. Overall, he scales really well. He fits really well into your Star Wars 6 inch display. I would kind of like to get a uh, Death Trooper and at least a Jyn Erso or a uh, Cassian Andor to kind of compare him to, but I can imagine as a baseline troopers will be around the same height if not taller than Han Solo. Overall, if you ask me should he get this figure, I'd definitely say yes. It's one of my favourite figures, it really, really kind of caught something in me, it kind of made me want to use it as my uh, profile picture and kind of my online avatar. I love the sculpt, I love the weapons, I love the painting. I haven't found an issue with the painting yet. So if you're a fan of Rogue One, Star Wars, you like adding troopers, you want something to army build, then definitely pick him up. Like I said, you can get him around 20 quid. I've seen him sometimes 16 quid on sale. Uh, he's around 19 pounds on Amazon. So if you want to pick him up, definitely go ahead. He's a fantastic figure. He's a bit older and he does kind of suffer from older figure syndrome. Like, we, like he doesn't hold up to a lot of the newer figures, but uh, I'm not going to complain really. He's uh, fantastic. Definitely uh, pick him up. Thanks for watching. Uh, hope you enjoyed. Remember to like, comment and subscribe.